that this is how government is immoral, and that this organization called government then only knows how to solve problems through one way, and that's through the threat of the use yes. of violence to solve any problems versus a plurality of nonviolent solutions yes. we already share. Right. All right, and then what do you guys think of that? I, well, yeah, I think any bill, tax, anything like that, anything that's signed in, passed through legislation right. is always support, supported and backed by the force of a gun. Right. That's the only way, you know. Right. If I don't play along, someone's going to come get me. Right. So, right. Yeah, cool. Way of doing it. Yeah, I sure. completely agree with right. uh, your stance on the matter. Yeah. I'm not for government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so you had a question in terms of uh, how would... Logistically, how would you how would you recommend direct democracy for people to be able to determine how they chose where the, they allocated resources is within their own community or what does that today is uh, the market prices dictate right. that right yes. so um, prices dictate like for someone who's going to produce whether I should use aluminum because this steel is too high or use plastic or different kinds of metals right markets of the price uh, send signals to the producers like. There's no one person in the planet that knows how to produce something as simple as a pencil. It right. takes market competition and collaborations, thousands and thousands of people from all over the world to get rubble one pencil. One pencil right. right. Uh, so the market does a really good job already in allocating efficiently resources. But what government does when it meddles into the market, uh, it creates price controls or eliminates price signals altogether. Because what government is objectively is a monopoly on services and right. goods, right? right? So like a monopoly on roads, on security, on arbitration on alcohol here. ABC is a monopoly mm -hmm. of digital spirits. Right. The post office is a monopoly in delivering pieces of paper, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And they're billions of dollars in debt. Of course. So whenever you have a government monopoly, no market competition, quality goes down, cost goes up. Of course. So the absence of that monopoly then, now you have the freedom to cancel or unsubscribe any goods and service you have the, of those monopolies. And now you have the freedom, economic freedom, to compete entrepreneurially in order to say, I could provide you a better good or service that's not going to be abusive to you. Well, consumer. how would that affect your stance on federal versus privatized prisons? All right, so like today, there's no such thing as private prisons. This all right. comes from so, taxation, yeah, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so then what, what would happen then, the absence of a monopoly community, like Virginia, for example, you have thousands of free society based on consent catering to your life's on preference, like the Amish. Mm -hmm. They know that children, babies can't give consent, so they wait until of age. And here are the rules. We like to be uh, very agricultural. We don't like technology as much. And the only consequences is social ostracism. There's no prisons, right? There's no college stock case. Right. So be whatever the rules and terms of agreement when you move into a community would be, right? Yeah. Hey, it's a $5 fine. It's two may enter, one may leave. It's a pillow fight, right? Uh, and your whatever gated community would look like. Sure. So be different from one another. It wouldn't necessarily be a prison. Okay. Yeah. Um... I just think that that become my only problem is the the thing I'm having trouble answering yeah. is so what happens when that person leaves? Uh, when like, you don't detain them, right? So oh, no, so the person doesn't want to uphold their contract. All right, that's a good one too, right? So say, hey, uh, I punched him in the face, and the terminal agreement said I will make make you whole as a victim, right? That is what justice does, right? Uh, there's a perpetrator, you're the victim, I'm the defendant, there's evidence against me, I'm here to make you whole. But I say, you know what? I'm not going to uphold my contract, even though I said I would. It's perfectly fine. All the other contracts that people have with you cease immediately because nobody wants to be known to be making contractual agreements with someone who is an aggressor. So no more running water, no more electricity, no more internet, no more all the goods and services you take for granted uh, because of the market has produced and now you're pretty much uh, commit economic suicide, okay. right? right. Uh, so now in the event that I get into a quarrel with someone else and he hits me in the face and I try to seek arbitration, they're going to say, yeah, I would love to help you, but first got to settle the dispute with, you know, with him first, right? Okay. Uh, and so there's a lot of social economic factors that push people, you know, it's, I'm better off actually agreeing to my word, right, no, yeah, no. <laughs> right, instead of committing economic seppuku, uh, <laughs> right, yeah, just, yeah. right, yeah. and, 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 and these are agreements that they would have agreed to in the beginning, moving in, right, right. it's like, well, why did I sign my name on that, on, on there to begin with, course, right, yeah. but at least now you have explicit contracts with explicit consent, whereas there's no factual evidence to show of a contractual relationship with government and their monopolies, right, right, for example, Other than um, what the theoretical social contract. Right, right, and of course, when someone says, "It's like produce it to me," so yeah, so right? let me say that. I would love to sign. <laughs> yeah, that. Where, yeah, where did I sign that? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so then now you just have a free market society based on consent, with all kinds of services and goods that have real obligation to be provided, and anyone can compete. But okay, my problem is, I don't think the free market, like if it's le allowed to just do its own thing yeah. without any government molestation, I still don't believe that that will adjust to take care of I don't feel like it would make things better per se because right now it the best way to earn money is on money and not through your labor so what do you mean on money so you like capital gains yeah any money that you make on money is is you're gonna be able to keep a lot yeah. more of it so like if you invest and try to yes yeah all right that's, that's even on interest in banks and stuff right you know, yeah and that's good though right no because it keeps the money pulled 
and what it allows you to leverage money and make more of it yeah and, and a lot easier and a lot quicker than those who don't have as much to contribute towards uh, the system so it, you end up like with a top okay so we want to look like why do they not have much to contribute to begin with right so let's look let's look like a one step backwards and why they don't have much money to contribute would be well you have to work like over 101 days a year to pay to, to surrender your property through taxes right that's a lot of time right in which you have to you work really just to pay taxes right uh, so nearly half your income you got up local city state federal sales tax everything that you bought has been taxed mm -hmm. uh, licenses and permits are all the tax fiat currency uh, monopolization currency is another tax the money you get depreciation value right so all these different types of taxes yeah would hurt someone in a tight budget to begin with that would prevent them from able to in invest, right? Before, yeah. uh, so then the last thing you want is a monopoly in currency like the Fed, and which, yeah, the bankers do have access to that uh, money first mm -hmm. uh, that is more valuable before it's uh, released to everyone else. As soon as it gets inflated, yeah. So right, so you wouldn't have any of that then. Right. You wouldn't have centralized banking. You wouldn't have uh, this kind of dominion domination of uh, the Fed and which they're only allowed to produce currency and no one else is allowed to compete. So what, what, how would, what would you suggest in transition? How would we change from what we've got now for the top heavy system with unequal wealth right. distribution? Not, not say, I don't think it's right for the government to take money from anyone, you know, that's right. their property, but how would you switch over to this new system that you're proposing? I guess the way I would say, uh, living our lives right now in the way that we live principally, morally, right? We right. want to live uh, consistently in our virtuous paths and that would exclude then politics and government altogether, right? I don't use violence to solve my problems. Government only knows how to do that through violence. Sure. So let's live our lives principally and start creating a community here that agrees with that foundational value with one another. And as our community grows more and more, we're able then to ostracize government in the end because government really makes up less than 1% of the population. Right. Right. It's that's your police or politicians, people in the criminal justice system. It's not everyone that's the government. We really make up the majority. Yeah, of course. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. So it just takes a large community here to eventually uh, cast a shadow onto government and eventually it's like look here here's our community if you want to be a part of it you got to let go of these uh positions of dominion these positions of uh tyrannical cease the throne of tyranny so to speak well then where would you stand on the like the right to bear arms because i feel like it's not to, to have your gun to go hunting with it's to resist uh you know if self-defense yeah, right right to self-defense yeah right. right i mean uh the bill of rights wasn't created so much to tell you what you can have it was created to tell government what they cannot infringe upon right right uh, but on, but that creates positive rights, unfortunately, which means that government can kind of decide all the areas well maybe you don't have a right in, right. and that's where it kind of led to a lot of exceptions, and now uh, the courts uh, kind of interpreting it as, as they will today. Um, so yeah, in a free society, yeah, you can have whatever you want uh, in terms of self-defense of yourself and others, right? As it exists today, many Supreme Court cases have ruled that there is no obligation to protect your life, liberty, property. Right. Uh, Vega versus DeShaney County, Warren versus District of Columbia, no obligation. So in a free society, you will have a free oblig uh, a real obligational contract. Hey, uh, otherwise, like if I came to your house today, sometimes we'll provide a protection. Like get the hell out of here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But like, so then, I mean, because that, that says something about like Korematsu versus the United States where the uh, like Japanese internment camps and those were ruled legal for the sake of the public, the public's good. So they, right. in effect, no one has rights should the government decide that. Right. So that's what I find scariest yeah. about it is it's nothing's really concrete and right. they can leverage their documents against it. Right. Anytime right. they want to make it up, you know, they just anything, go for yeah, it, right? They make an legal. amendment. At one point they said alcohol was uh, an immoral sin. And then they changed their mind later with uh, what the 18th Amendment. It's all right, you know, maybe it wasn't, maybe our bad, <laughs> well, <laughs> right? So I, I agree with everything you said. Yeah. Uh, my, so I feel like uh, capitalism could be a good thing. Yes. But what the real enemy is is corporatism. Uh, and without government, there's no corporation, right? Right. Well, corporation is a piece of paper handed by, extended by government for CEOs to escape liability for their own actions. Right. Well, right? wouldn't you want that where there's these social contracts? You wouldn't have that because. Government guarantees liability protection, right? You could go to City Hall and if any kind of business, all right, now you're an LLC, right? Government will back you. You don't have, you're not entirely liable for any of the actions you may cause them to injure other people. Sure. So a market will not have that. A market insurance company like, look, this is too risky. We can't involve ourselves in this, right? Uh, and so you'll find a lot of factors like, is this too much for us to insure that or to hold you uh, to provide liability for that? There's no immediately immunity for everyone, but it's the same immunity that government grants itself. Like you can't sue a state prosecutor. It's very hard to sue a judge, right? The same immunity that uh, politicians just grant themselves, right. right? The rules, the prison rules, only apply to us as tax slaves, not to the rulers themselves. 
So you wouldn't have corporations, you wouldn't have any of that kind of nonsense. They go back to the way it used to be, where real business saved up a lot of money and, and, and grew slowly just in case, right? Not like, hey, I'm an LLC, great, I'm wearing like an Ironman student walking across the street, nothing can happen to me, right? Um, and that's that would be the difference. So there would be no plan at Starbucks, unfortunately. Yeah, so but there's no way to try to get through loopholes and right. that way. Okay. Because okay. there's no government. There's no one, uh, you know, to twist their arm otherwise. What I find absurd is that congressmen can't write themselves term limits at all. They don't write right. themselves term limits because they don't want to lose their jobs. Right. It's ridiculous. I think like over like eighty percent of like uh, in terms of state senators um, have been in office for quite a long time, right. repeatedly over and over and over again. Yeah, Incumbents definitely right. have the advantage. Right. 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 But why would they want to write a law that like? Lose their job. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So how, yeah <laughs> exactly. how would you pro how would you propose to like? Oh, step a little closer. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Sir, yeah. Yeah. My bad. How would there you propose go. to enact like a change like this? So the way uh, that we will do this is by creating this uh, this community here. So we're called Liberate RBA. Liberate our community from the idea that violence will set us free, and that would extend to uh, government as well. So what we do in terms of how we would do liberation, a lot of self education, personal internal freedom, and uh, good understanding of economics, of history, uh, pursuit of like independence in terms of like trying to be uh, wealthy within ourselves and in our own personal pursuits. Uh, interact with a good community of people that are not going to like steal from you, right? Uh, or, or wouldn't threaten to pass legislation against you. Um, other extents of that would be firearms training. We do a lot of that as well. Um, you know, first line of self-defense. I know you mentioned you're a pacifist. Um, but there's a lot of different kinds of uh, areas of interest a lot of people have as well. Like, I mean, but it seems like this really relies on people being decent, right? Yes. I was about to ask, like, what is your personal opinion? Like, what do you... I think most people are. I think Hobbes is wrong. I mean, Hobbes himself grew up in a very terrifying house upbringing, and so he grew up, of course, uh, didn't have his father there, was kind of beat up growing up, so of course he's going to think, yeah, the world is an uh, evil, bastardized place. Right. Um, but for the most part, if I talk to in a lot of these conversations, most people agree, yeah, it's wrong to use violence, they do value consent. The, the key way that we would kind of force government to collapse, there's, it's, it's inevitable. One... Uh, it's lost 97% of its value of the currency. It's got 3% to left to go, and then it's going to collapse. But uh, the collapse of empires is not necessarily violent. You look like at the eastern blocks of uh, Europe, and when USSR collapsed, it was all relatively peaceful, right? There wasn't all these raging wars. So secession is inevitable. So what we do now until then is important, and then we could do a more easier peaceful transition towards that here in Richmond, or we could take a good 10% here of Richmonders, and all up our exemptions, for example, and that's chokes to government in terms of no longer having access to withholding tax. Uh, have you heard of like why withholding tax was ever brought to being? Why withholding tax? Right. It was Milton Friedman's greatest sin because people sometimes pay late, they're not on time. And it's like, look, if people keep doing this, uh, we're not going to have money for our programs, and these are going to collapse really quickly. So withholding tax was the solution. We will continue to steal money from you every day for an entire year, and it's up to you to decide whether they stole too much or too little. But at least government has their blood money now, right? That straight line through these unfunded liabilities. But eventually, though, Richmond's going to look like Detroit. Uh, they're already having problems with their budget. Philadelphia's next. San Francisco's next. Um, I just don't believe that people are inherently good. You know, you have fifteen percent of the population responsible yeah. for fifty percent of the murders since the nineteen seventies. You've had single motherhood and white and Caucasian families yeah. go from yeah. go up to fifty nine percent. It's yeah. gone to seventy nine percent in black communities. I don't. So I feel like people. But violence as a whole, as you've seen, though, has gone down over the past several decades, and they've shown in proportion towards the numbers like the FBI statistics. Right. Uh, so we can look at that. Well, um, then, so wouldn't what? Wouldn't you want to accredit that to the police, though? I mean, I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Right, right, right. Uh, I don't know if you want to credit it to the police. I mean, the police doesn't have an obligation to protect you, right? And right. the police, in terms like, their accreditation has caused a lot more harm to, like, the war on drugs. And you want to look at who's actually creating more violence. It's actually government well, individuals. it's not a war on drugs. It's a war on marijuana. It's a war on people. Well, fair enough. Yeah. Right. Uh, so it's a war on vices. It's a war on self-ownership. And that has produced millions and millions of people, over 80% of them people in those cages for victimless crimes. Right, right. Uh, year year after year. So we want to look at who's technically creating more violence. Actually, private crime. Uh, they say actually police steals more than burglars in the United States now through asset forfeiture. Canada put out uh, a message say, look, if you're going to go to the United States, be careful. Uh, they're going to take your money. Don't leave it out in the open. If the cops stop you, they're going to take your money. And this happens all over the country. Millions and millions stolen. So now you see government uh, outranking private crimes in terms of uh, we're talking about like violence, right? right. And then, of course, you have like the 20th century, 30 million people, the United States government alone has murdered, right? right. Uh, and these are not, uh, these, these are outside, this outside of World War II. Well, they also released, you know, in, in the 70s, there were, there were 500,000 people in men's still institutions. And now today, there's about 75,000. So, 
the population has skyrise, they're gonna leave more crazy people out there. Right. I feel like that's a huge issue. Yeah, how yeah. Do we help help get those people the care that they need. How do we get right. them off the streets? Uh, so, so we're talking about like how would we provide like medical assistance? So, you guys have read like 1984, right? George Orwell, mm -hmm. right? And they they were like rewrite history, and all of a sudden we forget what history was like. Yes. Same thing happened before 1960, the war on poverty. Uh, Lyndon Johnson's war on poverty, war on people, and that before that, poverty rates were declining rapidly because all these communities created this kind of a central uh, community bank that people could kind of go into if they became impoverished automatically, right? They were able to jump back in, out. So they had like unemployment insurance, health insurance. This was affordable for everyone, and because of that, employment uh, went, of uh, unemployment insurance of uh, people not being able to find employment went down to me. Poverty rates went down. This idea called friendly societies, mutual aid societies, spread all across the United States to, to Europe, to England. But then the last thing the government wanted is that kind of independence. Because then people realized, well, we don't need government. So then they started shutting them down. They started going after the doctors and the license. They went and said, yeah, this building's not up to code. You're going to have to pay like $200,000 to upgrade that. And they couldn't afford it. And so they did away with the competition. And bam, now you have government Medicare, Medicaid. And yeah, now it's a lot difficult to help a lot of these people through that. Whereas in the past, they were helped. So, I mean, because you mentioned like people, like the cities are going in debt. So yeah. what what if the government as a solution just cut programs like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, like it's two biggest expenditures? Right. Uh, Our top that, that, would, that would kind of go back to like, uh, why would like maybe politicians uh, pass a law, they'll lose their jobs. Uh, the first person to say, hey, I'm going to cut Social Security. Political suicide. Yeah, political suicide. Yeah, yeah. the people who are going to vote against cutting their jobs, they're going to vote against you. And uh, yeah, you, you're not going to go anywhere, right? It's a stalemate kind of chess. Well, that's the there. worry. So yeah. how, how, like, you know, people are really resistant to change. How right. could, you know, trying to overthrow government and clear it out of the way? That right. sounds like an almost an Well, we, we got time to do it. It's not really trying to do it uh, overnight, but overnight, very quickly, we can let go of the idea that politics will set us free, right? There's no factual evidence in history to have shown that that government has ever set anyone free, right? right? Politics has ever set anyone free. So let's do something that's never been done before to not compromise our principles for politics and choose the road that's never been traveled before and go the anti-political uh, roots, the campaign that we do in March, right, against anyone who vies for the throne of tyranny. And, and, and through that, yes, I will meet a lot of people who do work in those sunny sectors and they realize, yeah, at the end, when, it, when we're ready for this, they're trading breadcrumbs for the huge pie in the sky of, of it, finally having economic freedom, right. right? Finally being able to say, I own my body. This is my land. There's no more eminent domain coming and taking it right, away yeah. anymore, right? That's uh, negotiation. Right, yeah. right. So that's that's the trade-off, yeah. right? Uh, government will always just kind of dangle breadcrumbs that were yours by birth to begin with in terms of like your freedoms. Right. Uh, and that's the kind of message we kind of have to reach out and branch out. But we do have a lot of people now. We've been doing this for four years. So we have a lot of people in the community, VCU students, parents, children. Some people do work in the government too. And they, they know that I'm using this then as a jumping board to go to the private market, right? right? We, you know, we all come out of the matrix at different points of our lives. And sometimes it's harder from one another, but right. at least you have a community now that can help you direct in the direction you want to go to I'm unplug, right? right? Yeah. But yeah, it does. it's not like an uh, immediate martyrdom, right? right? We don't yeah. need, yeah, <laughs> we're already I'm, suffering yeah, already, right? Already <laughs> no, that's what I'm totally agree. All right, we're so we'll bring, we'll bring you guys here out to uh, the Compass. I was trying to get back to my dorm, and then I liked your sign. Oh, and nice. So I decided to yeah, that was it, that was it. I just like, you know. What are you guys studying here? Uh, business. Business, yeah. nice. Biomedical engineering. Wow, nice, Thank wow. You. And business. So, yeah. yes, need hall then, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm here until, I graduate finally in spring. Okay, so, nice. Yeah, Congratulations, yeah. that's Thanks. awesome. Yeah. Uh, but that would be like criminal justice, and I realized, oh, great, it's too late, but I got to finish through. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I feel like business is just a catch-all at this point. I kind of hate the idea behind it, but I feel right. like it's got to be a part of it. Well, it's good to know marketing, commercializing. I mean, that's something, I guess, in your industry you would have to kind of know, or like, especially the art students, because I don't know if they actually explain, like, here, here's the arts, but... You know, go out there in the market how to market yourself and how to do yeah. contract works. So it's like, yeah, I don't know if they cover much of that, but yeah, business is the way to go, entrepreneurship especially. Well, it seems like the most successful way to be in business is to exploit people to the fullest extent that they're okay with. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's it, cut well, the cost low, all that. Right, right, but it goes backwards, it goes both ways. Me as an employee, I want to make as much money from you with we're working the least amount of time. Right. And of the course. employer wants to do the same thing back to you, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, we can agree on turn these terms, right? right. Negotiations are something that's severely lacking in most of these classes, and which Definitely. they don't teach you, and yes. that's something that would be incumbent upon us each other to learn, right? Mm -hmm. To negotiate, not to like, okay, I guess I accept it, right? Yeah, I gotta work with it a little right. bit. Right, and then it would feel kind of, as you mentioned, exploitative. Mm -hmm. But that's uh, more of a recognition and not being more uh, affirmative in what you would want to pursue it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, I just hate right. the idea of being a commodity. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you have to sell yourself for everything, you know? Oh, well, for maybe sometimes in the time being until you're your own boss. Yeah. Right? That's just kind of the best way to be financially free is to be your own boss, mm -hmm. I find, right? 
So the best way to be free is to have enough money to live off the interest in your bank account. You can do that too. I feel like that's financial freedom. <laughs> when you can do that, mad. that's. I mean, or saving up bitcoins. Saving right? up bitcoins. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, is it still? What, do you know? I've it's six ninety. Okay. Yeah. So okay. it's going up. Uh, there's a halving point that already occurred, so a lot more scarcity. Uh, they already have like a brewery here, Tripper Crossing, that accepts Bitcoins. So oh, you can buy awesome. beer here. Okay. Yeah, nice. scan it with your phone and the, the QR code, bang, get your beer, right? There's a right. massage parlor that way. So it's happening, it's growing. Yeah. So uh, would you suggest this, the, the new society that you're proposing use Bitcoin? Uh, well, see, Bitcoin or anything else, right? Uh, in my community, yeah, Bitcoin, go for it. But that would be like the gold standard, right? There's all the digital currencies trying to compete for the silver standard, right? right? Uh, and for me, in the immediate future, that seems to be the way to go. I don't know what the future is going to look like 50 years from now, um, but you know, let the market decide. You know, just like any other commodity, which is a good commodity in terms of uh, what the consumers want, right? In terms of quality, market competition produces good quality. So, but market the market is also not concerned about the the world from a utilitarian standpoint. How so? Like, uh, well, uh, gas. Right. Gas, they don't want Tesla cars out, and you don't, they don't want energy efficient cars. They want to keep people pumping as much gas. Well, you, you know who's in charge of it, not preventing the Tesla cars coming out, right? The lobbyists. The uh, automotive uh, association. These are cartels, granted uh, licensed more cartels by the government. Right. So then they're allowed to prevent to see who's allowed to have their cars go into their uh, lots. If you want to sell it, you have to go through their uh, automobile dealerships, right? Uh, some Tesla's vehicles have found some exceptions, but of course, they have to go through that cartel, which is granted by government. Right. So that's not a market thing at all then, right? It's like the Taxi Cab Association that hates Uber and uh, Lyft because they have a cartel granted by the government, right? Right, And they're trying to prevent and stop and stump down and the market trying to produce cheaper ways of transportation, right? right? right. Well, Uber is almost exploitative in nature because if you actually take into account, you know, the, the damage on your car, the wear and tear, the gas and all those things, it, it's all... Most of the time, like on short trips, it actually costs the driver money to take people from point A to point B. Maybe. So, I mean, you know... It, the, I did Uber driving, didn't really cost me anything. It was a lot of fun. I did kind of like an Uber confessionals. No. <laughs> well, how did it, uh, how long did you do it? Uh, a few months. Okay. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, if you, if you did it over a period of time, you'd notice, you know, your car racked up a bunch of miles and you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, that's a trade-off. I, I know what, uh, what, what I'm getting myself into. I wouldn't say it's a split. For me, it's like, it's great. You can make like a hundred dollars in one night. It seems like a short term thing though. It doesn't right. seem like an actual way to like For pursue. some people, they, they do it for a living too. And Uber will help you buy a car. Uh, Uber will help you do the finances, um, and that's a pretty. And it's a lot cheaper, at least for me as a consumer, instead of waiting around for a taxi cab. It used to be I have to call like three different cabs to make sure which one would come on time. Right. Area, yeah. right. <laughs> and for me with, with Uber, it's like, all right, they're almost there in two minutes, right? Cool, yeah. Awesome, right? Those are all competing for your business. Right, right. right. I mean, the market, what it does is it doesn't say things are going to be perfect. But we want there to be problems. We don't want utopia, right? Right. And that way, the market, new entrepreneurs can come and say, you know what, I have a faster and better way to do this, right? Maybe an Uber driver, like you mentioned, because you know what, I'm kind of fed up in the terror where my vehicle. There's got to be a better way, right? And that's what the market does, allow anyone then to compete and see if that's something that consumers want, right? Start a Kickstarter campaign, right? Yeah, you're definitely right. Uh, do a market campaign, find someone in business, right? right? Things like Patreon for you. Right, yeah, right. Those, those types of programs are definitely so, at least in terms of what we have with the taxi cab cartel, now there's Uber and Lyft, that's a start, mm -hmm. right? If you didn't have that kind of cartel, I don't know what it would look like. You'd have a lot of different awesome different ways to kind of provide transportation, yeah. right? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I agree with what you said so far. I like what you're Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It would be ideal. I just... We've got to work on it. Low political efficacy, you know, it's hard to feel, you know, motivated. Right, 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 right. Change, time but. and time again, I was fooled by Obama, you know. Uh, so it's like, we're gonna, I'm going to close down Guantanamo Bay. It never happened. Got a Nobel Peace Prize, and then he starts drone bombing uh, hospitals and children overseas, right? right yeah. yeah, so yeah, that would kind of produce some apathy in that kind of uh, level. But the great thing about uh, what we're advocating for is that it has nothing to do with politics, right? right? So people right. say, well, I don't want to talk about politics. Neither do I. I'm completely <laughs> politics, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It cool. sounds like a cool change. Well, my name is Cal. My name is Declan. It's Declan, nice pleasure, yeah. pleasure. Sam. Sam, pleasure, pleasure. We're going to be at the Silver Fair this Friday, and awesome. we also have a club here as well. Cool. Uh, would you like more info? Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd yeah. be awesome. All right, cool. Never mattered to the so-called general public.
public about my nation's situation and how we rise above it and that other will we self-destruct and kill a home and the greater responsibility yes it's still a home we should know by now that the system is designed for our demise if we have right we'll be left behind the dollar size rule but what about the fool who falls victim to the material world